The if function is among the most widely used functions in spreadsheet tools and in Notion. It generates values based on conditions that you specify, which allows you to automate properties and further streamline your workflow. So we're going to explore the fundamentals of the if function, then build a few practical examples whose principles can be widely applied. And those examples are available as a template on Notion Market, which you'll find linked within the video description. And I should also mention that if you haven't worked with formulas in Notion previously, you might start with my introductory posts and videos, which you'll also find linked within the video description. But for everyone's sake, I'll briefly review the fundamentals of functions here. So what is a function? Well, a function is used in formula properties and it's sort of pre-configured actions to perform on their inputs. And those inputs are known as arguments. And each function takes a specified number of arguments and those arguments need to be a certain value type, such as a string, a number, or a date. And Notion offers a variety of functions for each value type, and you'll find a full list of functions with detailed information on my Notion formula cheat sheet at notion.vip slash formulas. So then what specifically is the if function? Well, the if function returns a value based on conditions that you specify. And to do so, it takes three arguments. So the first argument of the if function is going to be a Boolean value. It needs to evaluate to true or false. And typically that's gonna take the form of a comparison where you compare two or more values, typically using comparison operators. So just as a quick reminder, that can be just is two less than three, for example, our comparison operator being the less than symbol there. And that's going to return true. And that's true is going to be represented by a checkbox in Notion. And of course, this is the same for all iterations of the formula because we entered those values literally. We didn't reference other properties to retrieve for each iteration of the formula. But typically, you will be referencing other properties. So the second argument of the if function is going to be the value to return if that first argument evaluates to true. And the third argument is going to be the value to return if the first evaluates to false. So if we continue with our example here, we'll add our if keyword and open our parentheses. So our first argument is going to ask is two less than three and then the second argument we can type Cameron just a random text string that's coming to mind right now and the third one we could just say pink and so two is less than three and therefore it's going to return the text string Cameron but if we were to reverse this and ask is two greater than three which of course evaluates to false then we'll get pink for each iteration because that's the third argument and the value to return if the comparison evaluates to false now like i said you typically will not be entering both values literally and instead you'll be referencing another property in the database, at least for one of the values. So in the case of exam grades, for example, if we wanted to determine whether each exam was passed or failed, we could reference the score property and we could ask, is the score less than 70%, for example? And if it is less than 70%, then we want it to be a failed exam, but if it's not less than 70%, then it's a pass. So what we can do is ask, is the score property less than 0.7, which is the same as 70%. And if it is less than 0.7, return the text string fail. Otherwise, return the text string pass. So here we get three passes and a fail because this bottom exam is the only one that's less than 70%.
So let's move on then to our examples with those fundamentals of the if function having been described. And we'll continue to build on this existing example of exam grades. So what we can do is we can add additional conditions with what's called a nested if function, meaning you can use another if function within the arguments of the outer if function. So we have our status property already in place, but for each of these, we might want to assign a letter grade. So if it's, you know, in the 90s, we want it to be an A. If it's in the 80s, we want it to be a B and so forth. So sometimes it's easy to construct these elaborate functions within a code block where you can use line breaks and spaces to visualize kind of the inner elements of functions. So that's what we'll do here. And then when you do that, you can just copy and paste it into the address bar of your browser and then copy it again. And that'll eliminate the line breaks and then allow you to paste it into the formula property in Notion. So what we want to do here is we want to ask um, if the score is greater than or equal to 90%. So we'll start opening our if statement here and we'll do a line break to begin the first argument. So is the score property greater than or equal to 90%. And then for the second argument, if it is, we want it to be an A. And then for the third argument, meaning it's not greater than or equal to 90%, that's when we want to ask, is it greater than or equal to 80%? So we're going to start with another if function. And we'll do the same. Is the score property greater than or equal to, and in this case, 80%. And if it is, we want to return B. And if it's not, we want to move on to the next level, which will be the 70%. So I am going to copy and paste what we already have in place here. And just change that 8 to a seven and if it is greater than or equal to 70% we're gonna make it a C if it's not we're gonna add yet another nested if and this will be our last one asking is it greater than or equal to 60% in which case it's gonna be a D and at this point, we know that it's not an A, B, C, or D. And the only remaining option, meaning it's less than 60%, is going to be a failing grade of F. So then what we can do is just close out each of our ifs. And then, as I mentioned, you can copy this, paste it into your address bar, which I know that you can't see in the video, but it's pasted into my address bar. Copy it again, and then we can come down and paste this formula into the grade formula property. And so now you can see that the letter grades are appropriately assigned to each test score. So now not only do we have a pass or fail status, but we have all of these various letter grade options by using nested if functions, which again are functions within other if functions. So let's move on to our next example, which is to automate the status of projects. And for dashboards and filtered database views, it's helpful to assign a status to projects such as planned, in progress, and complete. So with the if function, you can automate that status property based on the progress property. And with relation and rollup properties, you can automatically calculate progress as a percentage of completed tasks. So what I mean by that is here we have a sample projects database and a project in a sample tasks database and 
Each task is related to one of these projects, and each task also has a checkbox property to indicate if it's complete. So what that allows us to do is add a progress property, a rollup property within the project's database, and we can choose the tasks relation. And we within that related database, we can choose the complete property, that checkbox property, and then we can choose to display the values of that property as the percentage of checked checkboxes. And so that's how we get the progress automatically for each project. So based on that progress, we want to automatically create a status. So if the progress is zero percent, we can call it planned. If it's a hundred percent, we can call it completed, and if it's any other value, then we can call it in progress. So it's, to do that, we're going to use the if function, and we're going to use、uh, a nested if function. So we can start by opening our outer if, and we want to know if the progress property is equal to zero. Then we want to return the text string plan. Otherwise, we want to ask: Is the progress property equal to 100%, which is one? In which case, we want to return the value of complete. And then, if it's neither zero or one, we want to return in progress or active or whatever you want it to be. So then we can conclude our inner if and conclude our outer if. Copy, paste into the address bar, and then paste into the status property. And that's going to give us our planned project, our in progress project, and our. Completed project. So if we adjust the check boxes of Project B, for example, Project B converts to zero percent, and the status converts to planned. If we check all the check boxes, then Project B becomes complete. Now, what you'd also maybe want to add is an even more outer if function here for any empty progress properties, which is probably also going to be complete. You could also, and I won't demonstrate here, but you could also use the or function within this first argument to say, "Is is the progress equal to zero, or is it empty?" In which case, you will return planned. So then, our last example is going to be the automatic prioritization of these tasks. And to automatically prioritize these tasks, we are going to reference the Eisenhower matrix. Which, if you're not familiar, it's a system of prioritizing tasks based on their importance and their urgency. So, for each task, you designate whether it's either important or not important, and urgent or not urgent. And according to those values, it's going to provide an action. So, if it's important. And urgent, you do it. If it's important and not urgent, you schedule it. And then, if it's not important but urgent, you delegate the task. And if it's neither important or urgent, you eliminate it. So, with a Notion database, you can conduct this process in a streamlined way. So, what we have here is for each task, we have. An importance property and an urgency property. Both are select property, and for importance, you can select either important or not important. And for urgency, you can select either not urgent or urgent. And so then, what we can do is we can create a priority property that's going to return the action that we want to take according to the values in importance. And urgency. So what we're going to do here is come into our code block, and we'll start by testing whether importance is important. So is importance equal to important? 
And so then the second argument of this outer if function is going to be what what do if importance is important. At this point, we want to test is urgency urgent. And so we'll start another if function and test is urgency equal to urgent. So at this point, the next argument is going to be if both importance and urgency are important and urgent, in which case we want to do the task. So then the third argument is going to be what if we have important but not urgent, which we are going to schedule. That's the third argument of the nested if function. And that concludes the second argument of the outer if function. And so then we're starting the third argument of the outer if function, which is meaning that the importance property is not important, in which case we want to once again test is urgency urgent. So we'll start another nested if function and we want to test again is urgency urgent. So now with this second argument of this second nested if function, we know that we have not important, but urgent, which means to delegate the task. And then the third argument of the nested if function, where we know that we have neither important nor urgent, we are going to eliminate the task. So then we can close our second nested if and then close the outer if. Copy, paste, copy again, and then paste into our priority function. So here we have our various options here. And if we adjust the values here, we can see that the priorities are adjusting appropriately as well. Now, what you're also going to want to do is to sort these priorities, sort these tasks according to their priorities. So obviously the do's are going to be the most important and you'll probably want them towards the top so they can be a priority of one. Delegate would probably be a priority of two. Schedule would be three. And then eliminate would be four but ultimately you could just eliminate but what we'll do here is we will use once again if functions to assign a number to each possible priority so we'll start another if function and we will ask is the priority property equal to do and if so, we want to return the number one. So this is an actual number value type rather than a string. So we don't place it in quotation marks. And then we are onto the third argument of this outer if function. And at this point, we're specifying what to do if it's not equal to do, in which case we want to test whether it's equal to delegate. And I am going to maintain our line break structure here so it's easy to read. And if it is equal to delegate, we want to return a 2. If it's not, then we want to start our third and final nested if, which is going to be... Testing whether priority is equal to delegate. And I'm seeing now that we lost a few characters up here. So I'm just going to make sure that that reads correctly. And the third argument is actually going to be, be testing whether it's to schedule. And of course, this is always a ongoing tweaking process. You'll never write your formulas absolutely perfect all the time so it's good for you to see these little adjustments that i'm making here and so we're testing whether priority is equal to schedule in which case we want to return a three and then we know that it's not due it's not delegate and it's not schedule 
So we are going to return a four. So now we can close out all of our ifs, copy, paste into the address bar, copy again, come over to priority order, paste the formula, and now we have all of our tasks appropriately sorted. I already have the sort configured to sort by priority order in ascending value. So then you would never really need to see this. We can hide it and we have all of our tasks assigned an action according to their importance and urgency and then sorted according to that option to that action so that is the widely versatile if function which you can use in a variety of ways but these examples demonstrate some core principles that you can reference and learn and then adapt for your own uses so practice them again these are available on notion market for you to duplicate into your own workspace and reference as you experiment with the if function and if you encounter any roadblocks you can find me on twitter at william nutt and i'll be happy to answer any questions